This is Bishop Gregory Brewer's sermon at the installation of the Reverend Scott Walker, October 12, 2013, at St. Agnes Episcopal Church, Sebring, Florida. Gracious Lord, as we gather together this afternoon in the name of your Son, we ask that you would open up our hearts and minds to his presence. Draw us near to him. Thank you for his love and grace and mercy. We pour those out freely amongst us, O Lord, that as we give thanks and celebrate this new beginning for this name, this church, you might be honored and glorified in all that is said and done. And so we say to you, O Lord, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I must confess to you that it has been over 20 years since I have been at St. Agnes Church. I was a rector back then in the Diocese of Central Florida, and I think it must have been some kind of perseal event that actually wound up bringing me here back then. And so for us to come here in some ways really does feel like the very first time. I'm excited to be here, I want you to know. Not the least of which is because of the wonderful legacy that exists in this place, but also because of the rector. He and his family came to see me as a part of the interview process. And, gosh, I didn't know you at all. And so I had this, bishops are getting put in this funny position. They have to have basically a 15 to 20 minute conversation with someone. And out of that, have the capacity gotten in, in my helper. To discern the system right there, is he the one, as it were? And but as I read and had listened to and talked with Ken and Ben about St. Agnes, I knew the one thing that was critically important, the one important ingredient in whomever God brought here, would be someone who had a tender heart toward God and a tender heart toward God's people. That to, out, to be able to minister out of that kind of joy, that kind of compassion, that ability not to sort of be stuffy, but just to be able to enjoy people's company, that ability to be able to speak out of a pastor's heart, the things that are said in terms of the teaching of scripture and the celebration of the sacraments, it was critically important. And to be honest, it didn't take very long to discover because God is that kind of open person to discover that that's in fact exactly who he is. And therefore, it was out of that that I was able to say, uh, uh, thank you, God, uh, for sending someone who I really do believe would serve well here at St. Agnes Church. Because you see, it's the responsibility, it's even the calling of a pastor by life, by witness, by proclamation, by demonstration, and by prayer to, in essence, collect a people together. Not for the purpose of merely following him. Otherwise, his picture would be up there instead of the Christus Rex. This is not Unification Church. We don't do that sort of thing. But instead, to call them into a genuine and profoundly common and deep sacrifice of their lives to Jesus and to one another, and out of that to the mission that God might have for this congregation. That's precisely why the Romans 12.1 reading begins, I appeal to you, and in the Greek it's strong, it means I urge. In other words, I'm about to say something really important, so I hope you listen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to do what? To present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. In other words, what Paul is saying is the very thing that is articulated in the Old White One prayer book service, where as we come about to receive the Eucharist, we would pray together, we do not presume to come to this table where people are trusting their own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. It's an active yield. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls and bodies. 
Because it is that common sacrifice of all that we are to Him who has sacrificed all that He is for our life, our salvation, the security of a place in heaven, the power of God's grace operating in our midst, all that He gave to us. It is that coming together of Christ's sacrifice as we yield to it and we yielding ourselves to Him that life where mission begins to occur, where people begin to love and forgive each other and enjoy one another's company and walk in a deeper sense of fellowship. You, you see, what makes any local church work cannot be having a lot of cultural things in common. We read the same newspapers. We live in the same community. We may listen to the same radio or television stations. That helps, but that's really not the heartbeat of genuine and profound Christian unity. Unity instead is not cultural. It's sacrificial. Unity comes from our common yielding of all that we are to Christ Jesus. So that that common sacrifice that we share is the thing that binds and unites us. We love and serve Jesus together. And that's what makes a church work. And when you have that kind of common unity, that means you can begin to get bring in people from all over the place. They don't have to be of the same culture at all. They don't have to be from the same part of town that you are. They don't have to come from, be born from the same family that you might have known. No, no, no. Something larger and something more profound happens. Where God brings people together even though they may have very little in common in terms of culture, because they all belong to Him. And therefore they can pray for each other. They can serve together. They can study the scriptures together and wrestle with what do those scriptures mean for us. They can begin to pray and to serve together. God, what is your mission for this congregation? And having the sense that God brought every single purpose here, every person here, for that purpose. I want to say to you, if you're a parishioner here at St. Agnes, you are not here by accident. You aren't even in the end here because you decided to come. Although the decision was important, that frankly what was really going on was God was organizing circumstances in such a way is that you may have chosen to come here consciously, but God brought you here. And He brought you here because there is, in fact, a mission and a purpose for this congregation. That's what Paul goes on to say, so that as you come together, we're not trying to act like a particular model that we have out in the world where we all try to look at act and think alike according to the culture, but rather according to Christ, so that you may discern what is the will of God? What would you have us do, O oh Lord? What is good, acceptable, and perfect? When that begins to happen, miracles occur. Lives are changed. People begin to be healed. Families are brought together in new ways. Relationships that are broken are being restored. Forgiveness and generosity and joy begins to be the characteristics that permeate a life of a congregation. And they begin to move together in such a way that they actually look forward to being together on a Sunday and serving together and finding ways to make a difference, not just in the life of the inside the church, but in the life of the community from which they come. All of that sense of mission and of direction comes out of that common sacrifice that we make together to Christ and say as we yield to Him, Lord, You brought us here. You have brought Him here. What would You have us do? And I really do believe with all of my heart that this is the will of God. That God brought Scott here for a purpose. God sent him here, just like in the gospel reading when he sent the 70. 
only you know as much or probably more about the power of the Holy Spirit because Pentecost did not yet come. So this is a gifted and wondrous time. It really is a glorious, glorious new beginning. Will it be easy or is it easy? The answer is no. <laughs> it's not. Which is why you have the reading out of Joshua where there is the exhortation again and again. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Because it takes courage, real perseverance, a kind of determination to be able to walk through the things that will happen as you discern together. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Because you have the wonderful sense that you are doing something that is beyond the capacity of just somebody's great idea. But God is actually using you to make a difference in the lives of the people around you. There is eternity about what is, is going on. And you know that something is happening that is bigger than what you may have known in the past. And that's worth everything. To know that God is using you, that you are making a difference in somebody else's life that touches the very hem of eternity. There is nothing I mean, nothing that comes close to that. So I rejoice with you. Because I believe with all my heart you have God's man. And you do too, which I think is wonderful. And I look forward to hearing, seeing, experiencing, and knowing the good things that will come out of this church. Named after a young martyr who gave everything because she was committed to Jesus Christ. To be named St. Agnes is a tall order, you know. But it is God's name for this church. And I look forward to seeing how that kind of love and compassion, that kind of generosity and kindness, will be manifested here for the sake of the gospel, touching Seward and beyond, that many would come to know the wonderful life-changing love.